Welcome to the podcast, the destination for insightful discussions and interviews on the appreciation, conservation, and husbandry of reptiles with a focus on turtles and tortoises. Now, let's join our team of turtle nerds. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the podcast, another exciting episode of your favorite reptile related show. Uh, I'm Anthony. We're here with Kevin and Chris. You know those guys. And hey. Steve is, is behind the scenes. This is episode 75. And I have to say something before we get going here. Uh, the first episode that we ever recorded was was John and I uh, in my basement. It wasn't until episode two that we were recording in, in a Toyota Tercel um, off the highway. Off, uh, on a at, a at a commuter lot off the highway, but, just meet uh, some uh, meet some people. Yeah, you know, just hanging out, you know, just interviewing people in the parking lot, see if they were interested in reptiles. Not really. Yeah. Listen back to episode two. That was in the Toyota Tercel. Um, this is uh, February twenty third, two thousand thirteen. Was the first episode. So this is eight years. This episode is eight years that we've been doing the podcast. I'm really wow. proud of that. Really proud of that. Eight years goes by in a flash. I was a little bit skinnier then, had a little bit more hair, a little bit less gray in the beard. So thank you so much for for anyone that's been listening since the beginning. I don't know if if you've been listening since that long, then that's incredible. But if you've been kind of listening for a long time, thank you. And we'd love to hear from you about it, um, how the show has changed, that sort of thing, and and why you're still listening. Um, uh, I don't know if we deserve it, but we sh- certainly appreciate it. So thank you so much. Um, so yeah, so we're really excited. And we're excited to to have... Um, Tyler Brooks on the show tonight. Um, Tyler is a uh, w- wonderful show. Am, am I freezing? Is that what's happening? Does some, does yeah. Tyler's wonderful show. Did I just say that? Uh, <laughs> Tyler is a wonderful champion for um, turtles and tortoises, uh, especially Conixies, um, the hingeback tortoises. And um, he partners with our friend Jeremy Thompson on a lot of things who we've had on the show in the past. Um, and he um, over, oversees what uh, the Conixis Working Group. I wanted to make sure I didn't say the Conixis Cooperative because I get confused. So can, can we start off just – can we start off by talking about that, the difference between the Conixis Cooperative and the, and the Conixis Working Group, that, um, Tyler? Sure, absolutely. So, thank you guys for having me. It's it's super exciting to be here, and uh, I like you guys I like the gear for sure. You guys are looking good. Um, so the connect the cooperative is is Jeremy's deal. You know that was his baby that he is he's homegrown that thing from day one, and that is completely and totally Jeremy's. Um, you know that's his boat, um, and, and I absolutely do whatever I can in the working group you know, to to help him. And he does the same thing with the working group. He's part of the working group. Mm-hmm. So the Conixis working group is going to be, you know, I mean, you know, like guys like Chris, uh, you know, anybody that has an interest in Conixis, keeping them, um, bringing awareness to them, anybody that can, anybody that can, uh, that can help shed light to Conixis, um, can be part of the working group. Um, that that's what we developed it. You know, it's it, there's several of us: Tom Arbor, Jeremy Thompson, um, you guys. You know, um, uh, David Mifsud, um, and absolutely, and then um, Arizona Tortoise Compound um, in the house. So. <laughs> Those guys, we all got together and started it. Andrew um, and I totally, um, we got together and started it, and just wanted to bring all the awareness we could get get groups of people in. Um, and really, if you're interested in Conexus, you need a you need to start somewhere, and we're a good place to start at the working group. Um, that's a jumbled up way of saying things, I guess. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Makes sense. Go ahead. Go ahead, Chris. No, I was, I was just going to say that, you know, it, it, it makes perfect sense. And one of the things that attracted me to the whole, you know, Conixis thing early on, and I had talked to Jeremy about this, was this is from day one, such a, um, I'm trying to find, find the best words to describe this, but number one is they're such an underrated group of tortoises, you know, and they're kind of, they've kind of always flown solo in a sea of all these other heavy hitters, the leopards, the sulcatas, the star tortoises, the radiateds, whatever. And I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that, you know, early on, and even still to some extent with some of these importers, they're, they're 
almost considered throwaway. You know, they, they, they've been tossed around for next to nothing for years, very little information on them. And here comes, you know, Jeremy and guys like you come out of the woodwork with, here's this group of tourists. Not only are they fantastic, but they've been abused, you know, and, and ultimately forgotten for however long. And you guys brought this light to them, which I, I personally think is incredible because it's hard to get a species like that or a group of, you know, tortoises like that so, attention in, like I said, like in, in a world of such other heavy hitters that people are so focused on. But I'm even hearing now people just contacting me and, I, you know, I, I'm no Conixus expert. I work with them, but I'm no expert on them. And people are coming to me asking me more questions about them than I've ever gotten before. And I think you guys, you know, Jeremy and you and David and Tom are the ones that are responsible for it. So that's just my little pat on the back for you guys for that. You know, Absolutely. Thanks for, bringing, Thank thanks for bringing an underdog out of the uh, ground. You know, and and absolutely, thank you, and that well said, and it, it's that's something that that attracted me to the to Conexus. Um, when I when I kind of got back into reptiles like eight nine years ago, we got back into tortoises. Um, you know, I started off, I got my red foots, and and I was real happy about it. But it, it, something drew me to it. Something that it, it's hard, it's a challenge, and, and that's something about the whole industry or, or the whole hobby. You know. It, it, Keeping creatures alive and happy is is a challenge and can be a very rewarding challenge. I you know talk about that later on, but it, you know I got I got in for Erosa um, and just thought they were the neatest. They are just so crazy, so neat, um, and, and they weren't that you know. And typically they weren't doing great, um, and so you know what I was doing wasn't working. And I started I started doing research, and I, I found Jeremy, I found Tom. Um, and started reaching out. And that's, that's really, that's how I got to know Jeremy um, and his passion for the, you know, for the Conexus genus. Um, and, and uh, you know, he's my bad influence. So that's why I have, have, uh, have so many of them now. <laughs> there you go. That's really cool. <clears throat> um, so you said you spent some time away from turtles and tortoises. Can you talk about kind of, what you were into as a as a younger man, as as a kid, and then kind of why you were away from them from them for a while, and and kind of how that went. Absolutely, um, yeah, man. So when I was so when I was a kid, you know, I started out in the woods behind the house, um, like a lot of us uh, did, and you know, we called it snake hunting, and we carried a machete, but like we never killed anything. You know, we were just <laughs> trying to like. You know, in case that crazy copperhead tried to chase us down, you know, that you always hear about that never happens. Um, but, you know, spending so many time, so much time, you know, flipping logs and really and finding salamanders, you know, um, growing up uh, in outside or in Birmingham, Alabama. You know, I like I just we had I had my first. The first thing I got to keep was a it was a terrarium. And um, and it had a bunch of different stuff in it. You know, it had salamanders. It had a, a corn snake, an eastern chain king, a baby box turtle, and like a bunch of salamanders in it. You know, and so uh, you know that that was I was probably thirteen or fourteen, something like that. And it just grew from there. Um, I you know all kinds of turtles. Um, once I kind of, my first exotic was a red tail boa constrictor and, uh, named Cliff and, uh, Cliff was pretty cool. And I got, I got into, um, as I got out onto my own and, and, uh, and got my own space, the tortoises, you know, the, the space for all that stuff came. So, you know, being in the South, red foots, um, I had leopards. Um, and really enjoyed, really enjoyed that. Kind of got, life kind of got in the way a little bit, you know, just career, family, um, that kind of thing. And, uh, and I made, made a decision probably about eight years ago, made some changes in my life. And, um, you know, I just remember being real happy when I was a kid with my reptiles and uh, I needed something to do with my time. And, uh, and so I got, I contacted somebody and I got a, you know, I got a group of, of baby redfoots and started raising them. 
Um, and I, and I, I raised them all the way up, you know, to adults and, um, got some babies out of them. And, and that was a neat, neat experience to, to come back into it. Um, you know, it, it was, it was a neat way to come back into it and it, and it's grown from those red foots, um, to, to what I'm doing now. So. Awesome. Why, why tortoises? So you, you had also mentioned before we came on air that one of the, one of the things that really, uh, caught your eye as a youngster were some map turtles. You say, did you say some sawbacks, some black right. knob sawbacks? Right. And that was something that really caught your eye, which, which makes sense. I mean, I can remember just like looking, going on kingsnake.com, uh, fauna classifieds or just surfing the web or looking in books and just flipping through pictures. And then I would see something that maybe I knew wasn't even that rare in the trade, but just something that I had never seen in person yet, like a, like a central American wood turtle or some of the map turtles or, or uh, Chinese golden thread, things like that. They can, they're like so striking. Um, but they're so much different than tortoises. So you had that interest in the turtles early on too. So, so um, how and why do you gravitate towards the tortoises over time? Just, just wondering for your thoughts on that. Um, honestly, laziness. When I first got back into it, I didn't want to deal with the water. Of turtles. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I didn't, you know, I, I, I chose tortoises because like you can interact with them. Um, and, and I mean, keeping snakes, snakes are really interesting, but like it, you're staring at a set of drawers, you know, like it, you know, for the most part. Um, so the tortoises, you know, just drew me because they're, they're, they can be interactive, um, in certain species. I don't keep any of my connexus out, outdoors, but like my mountain tortoises, it is, I mean, like I can, if it's raining, I can just stare out a window and watch them endlessly eat or just go do whatever they're doing out there. Um, that, that is really neat to me that just the interaction, um, I guess drew me to it. Awesome. Somebody had made a comment on, uh, the chat here saying that they would love a book on Conixus. Is it something in the works? Oh yeah. There you go. Yeah. I, so, Definitely not for me, um, but I think David, I, I can't write my name half the time. Um, David and Jeremy definitely have plans to do a book. Um, you know, definitely check out the, um, you know, the conservation blueprint, you know, that David did. I mean, I think that thing's like 10 years old at this point, but it is still very relevant. So, and I, and I think it's on the Conixus Working Group. Um, you can find it through the Conixus working group, but that's a great, um, a great start if people are looking, but yes, I agree with them. And I, those boys should hurry up. <laughs> yeah. I, re oh, I remember at, um, uh, at TSA, uh, the TSA conference back in 2016, that's when I met David and he was doing his talk on the, uh, Conixus of Madagascar. And, awesome. uh, you know, and I, re I remember watching that talk and, uh, you know, afterwards he and I shook hands and then later that night, you know, we're drinking at the bar, the whole thing. And, you know, I remember, I don't know if I actually told him or not, but I thought like, that's the kind of stuff that would just make a book about this genus. So incredible because you don't, you know, field research, especially on exotic tortoises like that is limited, really, no matter what kind of species we're talking about, unless we're talking about Galapagos tortoises at this right. point. But uh, it, it was so specific. You know what I mean? How many people do you know have gone to Madagascar to pay attention to the Conixus? You're right. Everybody else is number one, paying attention to the plowshares, then the spider tortoises, then the radiateds. And it's, it's, I don't even think I knew that they were there until I saw David's talk, you know? So uh, hurry up with the book. <laughs> is it right. uh is it just uh zombensis on madagascar or is there other associations no, as well uh, it's the Dumergui, isn't it? yeah yeah okay. yeah yep Pretty oh cool. zombensis isn't there no zombensis cool. is in uh mainland africa and then but they say the zombs are what or are the Dumergui or the predecessor to the dome right. oh really okay i believe uh, island tortoises how did they get there yeah, yeah exactly currents man currents <laughs> yeah been watching videos on currents lately. <laughs> okay, can I just, as an aside, can I just go down a rabbit hole real quick? Kevin, mm -hmm. every time you've been on, how long have you been doing the show with us? Uh, three and a half, four years. 
this is the first time that you've been the loudest. Your microphone? Did you change oh, yeah. something? Uh, I, I am. I got a. You know, I boosted up AirPod Pro. You started talking, and I almost like jumped out of my shorts. I'm like, Sorry. what just it happened? Was oh, it was loud. great. It was great. Yeah, you were like right in my ear. I think you caught Steve by uh, by surprise too. He, I think he turned you down a little bit. Gotcha. Sorry. Like, Hold on. Let's work on this. Kevin. Pocket. Kevin came in hot. Kevin hey. definitely came in hot tonight. Okay, I just, um, had, to you know, I just had to say that. Tyler's yeah, such yeah, a nice guy. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> and Chris, if I could just go further down a different ra- uh, rabbit hole, I I think I would say the radiateds get more respect than the spiders, but whatever. You, you listed the Well, I'm, I'm not talking first. about a respect level. I, I basically was going from rarest to most common. You know, that's, that's why I went plowshare spiders, then ra- radiators. I knew it was. Yeah. <laughs> I don't buy it. <laughs> I'm That's because he it. keeps spider tortoises and I keep radiators. Yeah. I will t- I, <laughs> yeah. Can I say one thing really quick? Yes. So this is yeah, not you Turtle related, me. you know? Oh, jeez. Uh, oh. uh, but when it comes to Madagascar, I don't. the tortoises don't do much for me. It's the baobab trees. Those things are amazing. I don't know if I'm even saying it right. They're just the sickest looking thing ever. What is that? Like the spiny forest? Like the tall? No, it's the, the, the like gigantic. They're like they are awesome. Huge trunks. I'm not gonna okay. lie, I wouldn't mind a replica in my backyard for no reason yeah. at all. To store the to to store water, those those guys. I and know what knowledge. you're talking about now. And so, knowledge. Did you guys uh either of you guys ever read how they reintroduce Aldabras back to Madagascar so they could have like sea dispersal for the baobab trees? I knew they were doing I didn't that know on Ryu. I didn't know yeah. they were doing that on huh. Yeah, I'll send you guys the articles on it. Okay, cool. cool. Kevin's been reading. I read sometimes, you know. Can, uh, can Mickey go there? Because uh, he's uh, a little too big. <laughs> You're going to have to to make room for the new cow that Casey wants. What is this cow thing, man? Everybody's been texting me for like the last week. <laughs> because she mentioned, it on, she mentioned it on Turtly Devoted. That's why. Yeah. Just you got to get her Matt a gift. He texted me and he's like, uh, I heard yeah. you need one of these. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> You gotta watch out, guys. Don't let your wives go on totally devoted because they're just gonna say all sorts of stuff that'll embarrass you. So, just saying. You'll end up with a cow. Yeah. Right? That's what'll happen. <laughs> don't have a cow, man. Hey, man, if it can pay the mortgage, bring it on. Bring it. I don't I don't think it can. <laughs> no. You uh, can yeah. eat it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then, then she'll stab me, so. <laughs> that's why i know it can't yeah. yeah okay so all right i digress i digress yeah. we got, we got <laughs> way off yeah it's too much bro um, banter yeah so <laughs> that's true i like that was that. good that, that was, was good it was real good wow but... nobody understands how good that was that was an yeah. inside joke good it was job. all back you know that was yeah that was it really... was yep Bring okay it so circle. tyler yeah <laughs> tyler's, tyler's here everyone. for me uh boy that's for me yeah. So, so Tyler, can we also just talk about in your experience? So, so, all right. So we did the turtles versus tortoises and what kind of brought you that way. So, um, what is it about Knicks versus, um, I know you also have kept some other tortoises as well. You mentioned Redfoot. I think you mentioned radiated at one point. I'm not sure if you still have them. You have the, the, um, mountain tortoises. So, uh, why is, why are the Knicks is something that you, that you put more stock into more effort into that you probably have more of, I think. Right. So what is that? Is it just because we want to breed something that really just doesn't get bred enough in captivity and continues to be imported and not bred? Yeah. Just the challenge, honestly, the challenge and the the fact that they need so much help. I, I mean, it hadn't been made public yet. The papers hadn't come out, but I mean, everything that I've heard over the past month or two coming out of in situ stuff. I mean, any, anybody that's been over there, nobody's finding Homiana. Nobody's really finding Erosa. Um, they need the help. They're hard to deal with, you know, so, and I can relate to that. Um, so it, it, it's, it's, it's fun. It's a challenge. They need the help. It makes me, it, it's something that I love to do. Right. I mean, I've talked about, you know, being a kid and keeping, keeping this stuff. So I guess this is more of an adult, me trying to be more of an adult and like and have my my fun time, my hobby mean a little something, mean more than just pets, you know, I guess. Or just that, you know, I don't know, you know, I like, I, heck yeah, I've still got my my radiators and my mountain tortoises and I hope to produce both of those species. And I've got, 
all kinds of other other stuff that I hope to 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 produce. Um, but the Canucks is really needed. I, I believe that. I mean, like Vic did such a great job. I mean, mountain establishing mountain tortoises and getting those as a mainstay in this hobby. Um, it, the same deal. The the Canucks just need the same work. I mean, it's the same thing. They were trying to do, you know, trying to do with what with Christina, Chris, and, and you know, it's just yeah. stuff that doesn't, yeah. you know, that needs the help. That's not going to be out there in Africa, you know, for very much longer. They are they're they're cool animals. They're beautiful. And, you know, some of them are. Some of them are, are brown little turtles. You know, and, and that doesn't float everybody's boat. But man, those can be some of the coolest, most expressive, interactive animals that you've got. Um, but you've, they needed the help and the challenge is honestly, you know, is where I was at and, and, and to, to bring meaning to something that I'm doing, I guess, is why I, I went down that road. Um, maybe that's selfish. I don't know, but it, I'm trying to help those guys, I help, trying to help the turtles. <laughs> I think that's great. You know, you know, it goes back to the whole underdog thing, but they're, they, some of them really are, you know unbelievably patterned i mean you know just look at the logo on on these shirts you know there's really nothing made up about that and they're you know some of them are little brown turtles but there's plenty of other little brown turtles that get plenty of attention maybe because there's something more conspicuous about them you know um you know uh, um geomida you know spengler eye there's obvious reasons why they're an attractive turtle you know um but you know in the end they're a brown turtle you know and I think that the, the hobby itself, or, or I don't want to say the hobby, but like the, the import export end of the hobby and the, and the pet trade is what's really kind of pinned Conixus a bad uh, fate so far. You know, I, I mean, I don't want to say fate because people like you guys and, and all of us are trying to come together to bring more light on them, but you know, they're a challenge. So it's not an inexpensive turtle or tortoise that's coming in in droves and it's easy to establish and rewarding right off the bat. It takes the work, it takes the challenge. And it's, it's sad that it's been this long before a group of guys came together and, and said, Hey, what, what about these? You know, I but, agree a hundred percent. And you're right. And it, you know, and, and like, and honestly, it, you know, it, you can compare each species of Conixus to something that is, that's been established in the, in the hobby, you know, like Erosa to, fair eye you know or something like that to where you can like man if you want to keep those mountain tortoises and you don't have that much space you want a really cool cryptic turtle mm -hmm. you know find a captain born to rosa you know so i mean just trying you can go down the line and like i mean the guy you know that's that's an actual tortoise the one that's on all three of those shirts is an actual tortoise you mm -hmm. know so yeah. it, they they actually you know it's too bad that we can't get a whole bunch of them here but um, it, they are a great genus, man. And, and they have, it is their fate. I mean, you're, you were right about that, but it is trying to change some of that. You know, it, that's exactly what we're trying to do. And I think in 10 years, they will be closer to something like, a you know, the Christina or the spider tortoise or something, to be honest with you. I think they'll be gone. I don't think that they will be, right. I think they'll be that rare. I don't think they're going to be coming in. Um, well, especially, you know, some of them are, are, are uh, obviously captive born, but just about anything is a whole different ballpark. But, you know, a lot of these wild caught animals that are that are coming in, you know, again, it's another thing against Kinixis is that they're they're sensitive. You know, yeah. these animal, this isn't, uh, you know, this isn't an Eastern Hermans tortoise that comes in with a bunch of parasites, you worm it, and the next day it's like looking at you for food, you know, and, right. and running to you for it. These guys are sometimes you look at them the wrong way and it's like, oh, what did I do? You know? Yeah. Um, oh, a hundred percent. I mean, what's even, it, they're ahead. not doing themselves any favors. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I think what's worse sometimes is that they, they actually do well. And then one day you just come in and they're gone. Like, it's a false you know, sense of security. They, yeah. I mean, man, I, I, I can't tell you a hundred percent. So you, I, I mean, I never really consider myself out of the woods. I mean, some of it, I mean, so keeping me on my toes. I mean, I guess I like that, you know? I mean, I, that's what I need yeah. from my projects, you know, is, is mm -hmm. I, I want to be, I, I want to, I got to have it. Otherwise, I'd just get bored, really. I, I don't know. You, you know, I mean, like, so, but 
it can be it can be devastating, man. You know, I mean, like you can ride a wave and and you're just you're killing it. You think everything's going one way, and then you know you get a you get a monkey wrench thrown your way, and and you 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 deal with it. You analyze it. You see what you can change. I mean, man, did I do anything? What happened over the past few days? Did anything? So it you know it can all go towards you know figuring something out. But it uh, they, it is tough, man. It can be it can be very uh, you know you can have good days and good days and bad. I just think you know th- this this story is such an incredible thing. Um, t- you know what you guys are doing, not only to kind of encourage people to care, number one, but also helping keep track of who has what, supporting each other, taking a selfless approach. Hey. I care about the animals. You care about the animals. Let's collaborate. Right. Right. So that's really important. But then also establishing these large assurance colonies, because this, this is a species that would just continue to be imported until there's none to import anymore. And because of the price point that they've been for a couple of decades, uh, people snatch them up and they say, well, yeah, you know, they're wild caught. And yeah, I know I might lose one or two. So if, you know, if I want to have five, I'll just buy 15 and, mm-hmm. and, and I'll throw them all in together. And then when it doesn't work out, I'll try something else. And so many people do that. And it's all these tortoises are coming in and dying for nothing. It mm-hmm. makes absolutely no sense. Um, whereas you guys are actually working with people. This is how, you know, what you need to do if you're trying to be successful, you know, people are starting to keep them individually. I know that that's something that you do. That's something that I advocate for a lot with a lot of different species that I keep. I think it's just so much easier. Um, a, a quote that I say, share all the time and I have on the podcast before, uh, Bill McCord told me jokingly, but it's totally true. You, if you want to kill an, an animal, breed it because it just complicates everything you're putting it in with another animal. It's high stress, it's complications. Mm-hmm. It's, it's disease transmission. It's so many different risk factors all being thrown at it at once. And, you know, we don't realize when we're keeping something, but it, it first dawned on me when I was out, this was the first time for me, I was out doing uh, wood turtle research with uh, Michael Musnick in New York state. And we were out just going around and, and looking and he would show me the data from where these animals would move. And I just thought to myself, like, how ridiculous is it that we keep these animals together in captivity because they can't, they can't get away from each other, even if you think they have enough room. Um, so that's a real challenge to everyone that, you know, most animals shouldn't be kept together and, and should be kept individually. So I think just, you guys are right on it in so many of the really big animal welfare and, um, you know, just turtle specific, tortoise specific and, and importation specific, like, ideals that are that are just really important and and something that we need to tackle so you guys you guys are right on it and i think that for me is what's so exciting about it thank you absolutely i mean the individually kept is a hundred and ten percent the only way to go it, 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 when you're trying to establish when you're, especially when you're talking wild call and i even i keep all of my babies um individually housed you know I mean, captive born babies every uh, you know it's just i don't know man i it's just so much easier to maintain to, to, to keep track of your in, your animal um, when they're that. I don't know. They just like I'll, I got a group of mountain tortoise babies from Vic a while back. It, they'll just go all in one, you know, and they they just absolutely kill it and they do fine. I just I can't do it with my Conexus, man. I just don't do it. And and, it, and it's it's paid off. Um, you know, it, it's it's paid off for the most part. Um, it, you know, I, I, uh, I think about the future, you know, I, I bought, I purchased 31 acres, um, last year and, and I'm real excited about, about, about that. I, I'm still here in town, uh, now my, you know, kids are in school, but, you know, I think in a couple of years we'll, we'll have the ability to, to start building out, um, there and, I really think about how I want to keep my Conexus and the, my, what my Conexus building is going to look like. Um, I want them to have more space, man, it, mm-hmm. more space. And, and I, it, you know, none of my founders will go outside, I don't think. But like how trying to think about what that setup looks like is fun. You know, I mean, that that that's fun. Um, trying to trying to really imagine that and, and see them because. 
you know, in, in some different, different, you know, different enclosures that can be indoors, but also, you know, I can, you know, introduce skylights and misting systems and, and, but in a big, bigger pen, I, I don't know, that's a tangent and that's a dream, but, but that, that, that really has me excited about, about Conexus for the future and maybe getting to, and really getting to observe more natural, you know, tendencies and, 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 uh, just, you know, what the animal actually does in the wild, man, it, it would be so neat to have that, have that opportunity later on. I love that. No, you're That's talking about actually it is one of the things that's so valuable about what you guys are doing, you know, um, you, you know, you said before you like a challenge and I think that's really important in herpetoculture as uh, overall, because so many people and, and granted, everybody's got a different lifestyle, has different responsibilities and commitments day to day. So a lot of people are looking for a pet that, you know, you can just set up and walk away from, you know, uh, and something like this is not like that. And by you guys being up for the challenge, you know, you're again, able to shed all this light, but you're learning certain things about the animals. Like this is essentially not a communal genus of tortoises, whereas Minoria are, they right. communicate seen it you know what i mean like i see it here with mine i'm sure you see it with yours it, it, it vic obviously has written the book on them you know yeah. and but that's not the case for every species and i and, and again this kind of work on such an underdog is going to you know bring such powerful information to light about hey you can't do that with this you can't do that with that just because you can keep minoria or herman's tortoises in a colony does not mean you can do that with erosa or or any of them you know yes sir so, hundred percent. Now let's let's take this moment to to get over to our our feature. Um, that'll be coming Minto's up. Minto's right mailbag. Awesome. There it is. <laughs> All right. So what do we I got? Start, I want to start this by saying you have more questions than I think any guest I've ever had on the show. Wow. Can yeah. I just say something though? Can I just yeah. say, is Jer is Jeremy involved? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but not for all the questions. <laughs> all right, all right, because Jeremy loves to ask questions, and and I saw him go crazy on the TTPG one where <laughs> where Tyler was uh, being interviewed. So I was I was thinking this could be a big one. Good. This so uh, good. I'll start. <laughs> yeah, Jeremy's start leading with, the uh, witness. TTPG Steve, in mind. Okay, so the first question is from uh, Andrew from Arizona Tortoise Compound. Right. Uh, will her. the Nixus Working Group be at the TTPG this year? Will the Conexus Working Group be at TTPG this year? Yeah. 100%. Awesome. 100%. I'm, I'm, oh, man, this is awesome. Rapid fire. Let's keep going. I like that. Right, here we go. Questions. I like that, you know. That felt really uh, good. Yeah. <laughs> also from Andrew, which subspecies of Conexus do you like working with the most and why? Um, That's a tough one. Eros are cool, but, man, I've really gotten into the Homiana. I've got a bunch of them at this point. And they're kind of like, they're the Arosa, like, sidekick or whatever, you know? Everybody thinks is so cool. And I'm like, man, my little brown turtles over here are pretty cool. These homies are pretty cool, you know? So, whatever. Oh the homie on are pretty cool. Oh, and he I'm, just coined that. Spectacular cool. I think he Jeremy's got homies. a new shirt idea, you know? Yeah, <laughs> the, homies. Yeah, yeah. the homies. Sorry, <laughs> that's from the All right, All right, so this is a question that I just want to know real quick. Is there population data for Conexus going back to like before people realized there was an actual problem? Like, do we know the rate at which we've lost them? Uh, not, no, not, not very well at all. Um, and this is what it, one a great opportunity to plug Flora Ilo, um, a researcher that is doing great stuff for Conexus that we support. Um, She's really one of the only people, I think, uh, is it Lupinelli or Lucinelli? Luca is doing some work as well. There's a few guys out there doing some, but Flora is really, is really doing some good work. Um, as far as population studies, not that I, I mean, I'm not aware of too much um, out there, man, at all. So, no, that, and that is, that's a big goal of the working group is to raise money for research. You guys know that I, I I I find that stuff valuable, just like you guys do. Um, that that to raise money to to put it to put money out there for those guys to help find out find us information. Yes. Okay. Awesome. 
And if uh, I, can I just add, Pep, I think, you know, we saw it like with the Asian turtle crisis 30 minutes ago, 30, 30 years ago. Sorry, Steve was giving me the finger. I didn't know what it was. He was giving me this finger. <laughs> um, he's pulling stuff up. Okay, from IUCN probably. Uh, so, so I get so flustered. He's it's so giving bad. you the finger. Yeah, Steve right. Steve gave me the finger, this one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you know we lose we've lost species before we even knew they existed and I, and that's what worries me if you know what's going on with with taxa like conixes where we don't know what's happening and until it's too late and they're just there's not a lot of um data from the beginning and there's nothing in between and there's not much now and they continue to come in and there's no way to know what the damage has been. So that, that I mean, that's one of the reasons why this is so important. And if you're wondering, like, oh, there's lots of them, like, you know, there's not, there's not, like, yeah, yeah. it's it's a false whatever. People are going to continue to a false narrative. People are going to continue to import them because they can make a couple bucks off them until they're not there anymore. And then mm-hmm. it'll be too late, and we'll say, wow, I wish we only knew then. Uh, what we know now and we, and we could have actually done something to help instead of just, you know, treating them as the 25th most important project in our, in our Mm -hmm. care. Well, it's, you know, the other thing too, is, you know, coming from a, from a hobby standpoint and standpoint is, and you guys have heard a lot of people say this already. Uh, you know, it's, it's the galbinifrons and the spangler eye where, where these species were, and some of the connexes still are very, very low priced animals when you see them on the market. Well, you know, Spengler eye and, and Flavo marginata, all those species at one point were too. I remember going to reptile shows when I was 15 years old and 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 seeing buckets of flowerback box turtles and Chinese box turtles for anywhere between $25 and $50 was a lot if it was a pretty one, you know? And it's the same thing with the hingebacks. You know, and you you do see a lot of people say that now. Hey, they're not gonna be like this forever. You know, one day somebody's gonna, you know, post something like that and the price is gonna be drastically changed. Because it's it's a similar situation that that's happened here, you know. One hundred percent, it's the exact same thing, Chris. I mean, it, it is the exact same thing. You are watching the the coral issue. You're watching it right now. I mean, mm-hmm. it, and they're they're just not going to be there. Uh, I mean, literally, I think it was. Uh, I mean, they're just they're telling me some of the the papers that I've gotten to read or the the information that I've gotten lately is that there is nothing to be found in, in that, you know, coming out of West Africa. And that's scary yeah. for stuff yeah. that, I mean, like the I, one pair of, of homiana that I've got, um, I got from a gentleman in, in California. Um, and he, they were, they were two animals of a, of a 23 animal import. Only ones that made. Wow. The only ones left. And and that is the and they're just survivors. I mean, they, you know, they just the guy had them for eight or nine years, and and I you know I got them in, got them got them here, and and I had you know that was I had some eggs last year, some homeyana eggs awesome. from that group, you know, which is it is it's awesome, and mm-hmm. like it, it I mean it, it excites me so much. It is awesome, but man, twenty one of those things had to die. Those things are sitting sitting outside in California for nine years doing nothing. I, I yeah. real quick, and then I, I know we got to get back to the mailbag here, but the, so much of this you know stuff is coming to mind. I'm not going to use any names or anything like that right now, but I I think Anthony and Steve at least will know exactly what I'm talking about. Homiana, with a with a, a situation concerning Homiana, where reason why I stopped doing reptile shows, at least the some of the more popular ones in our area. And uh, it was because they had just come in and we were being offered them. A couple of our turtle room members were being offered them for even lower of a dirt cheap price than they already were. Right. If we wanted to take some, well, a couple of us went over to the dealer that had them and the boxes had landed earlier in the week. This was a Saturday and the boxes that had landed on like Wednesday, they were never even opened yet. Mm. Okay. So these animals, mm. who knows when they were cleared by customs and fish and wildlife and whatnot, they were still in the exact crates that they came over in and the box was opened up right in front of us. And I'll never forget this right in the center was a big monstrous female homiana, beautiful animal that had lived its entire life yep. out in the wild, stone cold dead. 
Mm. Okay. She was dead. This individual animal was taken out of the box and tossed just about over my head into a garbage can. Makes me sick. And that was it. That I, I remember going. Sick. I remember going back to the table, and and I can't remember who exactly was there. Obviously, Steve was definitely there. I can't remember if you were there, Anthony, but. I was like, "That's that's it. I'm out of here. Like, like I can't anymore." You know. And then we, we had some co- we had some conversations later on, and we decided as a group, "Hey, we're done with the shows for now." You know, or or what? You know, indefinitely. But that was a, uh, you know, so that was fairly recently. Oh, it's been a few years now. I mean, I think I yeah. mean I stopped doing the shows before I moved down here. I've been down here four years. So okay, but that, yes, it's fairly recently. You know. Yeah. Okay, go back to the mailbag. Give us something positive. Well- <laughs> right before we get back, uh, the man behind the curtains gave us some information uh, that the population assessments were last done in 2013. They still weren't published the red list, uh, minus Labatiana, which was assessed in 2017. And I don't know if I said that right. I think I did, but who knows? Yeah, really that was great. Yeah, blacked out for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you debate. What happened? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, have at it, all right. right. So real yeah. quick, uh, this is for Anthony. Do you maintain any connexus? For me? Yeah, do you maintain any Knixus? <laughs> For me? No, I just have the shirt, actually. I don't. I feel bad saying that. You know, it's funny. It's funny. Um, I, I, I was just added to a, a chat, and if anyone who's watching is in the chat, but I was added to a messenger chat for Force Deny recently, and I don't have any Force Deny right now either. I did have some uh, of Ben's um, when when I lived in my last house, but then when we were moving, I, I sent them back. It's better that way. Ben is like the Force Deny whisperer, but um, I have ben never in my... Wife. Yeah, that's true. My wife didn't appreciate them fighting, but... Um, I have never in my life kept a hingeback tortoise, not even for a minute. Wow. We need to yeah. change it's, that, man. Well, yeah. I love them. I love them. And may, maybe one day when the situation's right, but I'm, I need to really, I, I, I think a lot of people take them on at, like on a whim. Obviously you guys are the exception. Uh, but, but I think a lot of people do. And I, I just, I don't want to do that. If I'm not ready to really dedicate what it takes the space, the time, the individual housing, the diet, the and for, for me, the veterinary care would be relatively simple. But I, w- I would want to make sure, and I know that's something you talked about in the TTPG um, one a lot too. Is is the veterinary care how you run fecals and stuff like that? If I think all of those things need to um, really be in place, and I just I, I don't know that I right now would would be able to do that. So anyway, thanks for the question. Uh, so. Questions keep pouring in. They're good ones. And they're, they could be rapid fire ones. So we'll just keep going. Rep- Yo, give them the rapid fire. Let's go. All, All right. right. Here we go. Uh, from Eric Roth. Are they fragile in their natural environment, excluding the impact of hunting or just in captivity because of import stress? Are they, are they fragile in like in the wild? You said hunting. No, no, I, I, not, not, I don't really think so. You, you know, I think, um, I think we get them here and they've got all kinds of stuff going on. Um, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, I know some people that would be better, better, well, so, you know, like David and Jeremy to answer that question. Cause they've actually observed them in the wild, but you know, as far as they're from a really harsh place, most of the, most of them, you know, most, all the species are, so they're rugged animals. Um, I just don't think you know, that, that we know exactly what to do with them yet. Um, and, and getting them here and getting them, you know, getting the ones that we can, I really don't know. That's what I'm trying to figure out is why they're so, so fragile here once we get them here. But I think they're pretty rugged animals in the wild. Uh, Um, but it's hard to keep up with these two footed, you know, the bipedal apes and, and, and all the damage that we do. So they're fighting a losing battle for sure. Yeah. That should that's that should be the the best that should be the title of the episode. That's so good. We just don't know what to do with them yet. That's yeah. like that's that's the hinge back dilemma in one short phrase. We just don't just know. Trying to figure it out, man. I mean, yeah, I'm not afraid to admit that. You know, I mean, I've had a little bit of success. You know, and Jeremy's had more. David's had some. You know, I mean, Hern or Andrew's had some. Um, but yeah. As a whole, I, I, I damn sure think that we've got another, you know, 10 years before we've got a, you know, I hope it's not 10 years, but man, I think 10 years, we could, we could have a good idea, but it's got to be yeah, in it for the long haul. Yeah. Right. 
So that's going to lead into the next question then. How would you suggest setting up a hatchling or young captive bred Conixus? Um, very simply, uh, you know, the way that the, the way that I, you know, Homiana anarosa babies and spec eye babies, I keep, you know, a smaller tub. Um, I would go, you know, like a cocoa chunk uh, substrate with humidity, a hide, some some pothos, I in, you know, enclosed for sure, closed chamber, um, pothos, you know, shallow water dish, and you can't go wrong. Uh, you know, Chris will tell you, Chris has dealt with some captive born, and they are a different animal yeah. completely. Now, they will, they, you know, I mean, I got in some erosa, um, some captive born erosa, and a couple of them started to act like they didn't want, they didn't like my food or something, you know, and so... Um, I had to, I had to, you know, pull a couple of tricks out. And of course, now those two are like the fattest of the six, um, of that group. But yeah, I mean, it, they can definitely throw you for a loop, but man, those captive born, if you can get them into a solid high humidity, closed chamber setup with, with, with some pothos growing in there, man, you can, uh, you can really have some fun watching a turtle grow. Awesome. And, you know, to piggyback off that real quick too, you know, going back to this captive bread thing, it's really night and day, you know, and, and just to, to bring up, you know, Conixus and Cursina. So these, these are two genuses, two types of tortoises from Africa that I've dealt with both wild caught and captive bred with. And it really, really, really is night and day. I'm not trying to preach the choir here or anything, but you know, even the, even the Cursina, like I battled with that species for year after year, right. after year, after year. And then when they were finally two, truly captive bred individuals in the picture it was like wait what you know it, once as long as they're set up correctly they're the rule it's just reward after reward after yes, reward and, and that's what i'm learning with conixis too you know is that once they actually are captive born you know half that fight is more than half the fight is over but it still comes down to you know setting them up properly if you go and throw sure. one of these things in a tortoise table like people are still telling you to, to do how <laughs> on almighty google you're going to end up with a dead tortoise, or at least a, a terribly deformed one. Yes. Conixus are, are, I mean, and a lot of them, they are very sensitive to that humidity. That You can really, those, the Eros and the Homiana, I've got some some Homiana, you know, that are captive born that some other people have raised and gotten them in. And you're talking, they, I mean, you got skews that'll hold water, you know? Yeah. And like, I mean, that. so I, I think that, the, the, you know, especially those forest um species the three from the from the west or, or that humidity and even the spec eye though i mean the spec eye from that arid region they i mean i've got some babies here they absolutely love their water i mean it, i mean it's almost like those radiators the radiators love water oh yeah you know, more than a red foot you know and like, yeah. i mean the rest of my radiators will mess up a water dish quicker than you know quicker quick as anybody so i you know yeah okay, awesome uh first one from jeremy now i i waited a little while you know uh, thanks <laughs> uh tyler why should someone consider conixus can you elaborate on the challenges that pushed you through to get where you are now a successful conixus breeder with an established wild caught animals i dropped it <laughs> um i mean like what what is he saying why should people get in there yeah, um, like why just somebody consider Pedro. Them? Man, because they are cool. They are and, and nobody's got any, right? I mean, like, if you want to be part of the cool crew, you know, go get your go get your Conixis. Um, otherwise get your Sulcata. No. Um uh, <laughs> no, I, I mean it, it like Chris was Chris alluded to it earlier. You know, I mean, we've all got different responsibilities and different and, and your life works in a different way, but like if you are looking for a challenge, it's something that is not going to be easy, but it's going to be rewarding, then that is a tortoise for you. And some of the rewards can be, you know, as simple as, man, that girl cleaned her plate. You know, I fixed, I, I, I prepared a meal that that damn tortoise ate. I'm proud of that, you know, because it hurts your guy feelings when they don't, you know. Yeah, absolutely. It My does. man feelings. My, that's right. Wait, what's the problem? Right. Um, it, I mean, it, it can be as simple and as stupid as something like that, or, or it, you know, it can be, you know, as rewarding as is like that story. You know, you you get something that has been it, it's been in the country for a while, 
but nobody else has been able to do anything with it. I, I got it in here. I got that pair in here. You know, I put them together. I, I, you know, they came across the country. They needed to be reestablished, whatever. I, I, you know, I got eggs out of them. I got them to, I got them to hatch. I'm super proud of that. You know I mean? That's yeah. just, that's, I'm through the moon with that shit. So, um, you know, it, if you're looking for a challenge, that, that, it, that can be fun. To me, a challenge is fun because you get the reward. Yeah. You know? And I, I would just urge people don't, you know, everything you just said, 100%, but don't do it unless you mean it. Yeah. And, and oh, that's, yeah. that's something that I think I get I did, about. otherwise the, the, yeah, the rewards aren't, there's not enough rewards there. If your heart's not in it, man, you're going to get it. You're get tired of it. You know, if, yeah, if you're doing it to be part of the cool crew, I was, that yeah. was a joke. <laughs> check check your guy feelings first before you be, right. be real with yourself right yeah, be real with yourself true. am i really and that's what i'm talking about when i say i have it i'd love to have more uh hingebacks or, or any i'd love to have more rhino clemmies i think those are both yeah. um yeah genera that need to be focused on because things are happening with with them in the wild and they're being important and they've been imported too much and yes. They haven't done really well, and people haven't bred them so uh, enough. Um, so I think those are there's some similarities there. But there's a lot know, of similarities. I love. Yeah, I think that's a we great. Got, we got a bunch of them. Yeah, I think it's a great yeah. comparison, actually. That, that, yes, that, that, like, that is literally, you know, two species that just keep coming in, and it's like, yep. well, what's there to show from them? You know, mm -hmm. they're, right. you know, they're really, you know, I'm mean, out about you guys, but you know. You, you, when you hear that somebody has man eye, actual captive bred man eye, like, hey, look, I hatched these. It's like, wait, what? You know, like that, that's yeah. great, you know? And, and that's a turtle that still boggles my mind. Now, we're not going to get on a topic of them, but I have to throw this out there. That's a turtle that has the looks too. Like, yes. I mean, are you kidding me? That, that yes. thing looks fake. You know, like, like when I have family over and they look at some of the ones that I have, they're like, oh my God, what is that? And I'm like, thank you. <laughs> you know, I have to tell them what it is because I'm all high and mighty at that point. But you know, it's yeah. it's it's so true. Like, there's another abused or or mm -hmm. underdog of the. I, I mean, agree. Stop, Anthony. You're not stopping me. You got to stop me. I'm stop. stopping you. I'm stopping you. Okay. Point is, just if you're doing it, mean it. If you're, if yeah. you're gonna do it, mean it. You know. Yeah, if you love it, then you got to put a ring on it, Beyonce. <laughs> if you like it, yeah. Oh, sure. Whatever. Uh, 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 so uh, 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 real little quick addendum to that. When are we going to South Africa? That's for all four of us. <laughs> all two four of us. us. We're going. Let's well, go. Let's I, plane tickets. I'll, I'll be honest. I'm probably not going to South Africa. I got a billion yeah. other countries I want to see first. Yeah. I don't know. South Africa is number two for me, man. Hmm. So I, 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 I might even, I might, oh, no, he's not doing it. <laughs> I'm ready, Chris. He's let's only go, buddy. Farted. <laughs> uh here we go so how much of an impact on the new regulations in florida that never seem to end uh, on future projects you guys were planning for and yes. excuse my pronunciation ready kudu reptiles ready kudu yeah um i don't know but i hope i hope uh it's minimal you know uh, michael cole's talking about it last night i mean they're coming after monitors now and like you know, we had a few black dragons on the way. I don't know that I don't know that we're going to do that now. You know, um, I, I don't know. It, it's 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 frustrating. Um, I, I understand. I get it. You don't you don't need Burmese pythons crawling around in the Everglades. Um, that that's not that's not her, her You know, that's not a. Uh, just a un, un you know a wanton keeper's fault that a hurricane destroyed a massive facility right. down there is what put those burmese pythons in the damn everglades and, and sure there's been a lot of stuff iguanas there's a lot of stuff down there you know that's so far gone from where i'm at in florida we're we're up here in the northwest corner that if we get weather you know i mean it's 25 degrees several mornings in a row you know, a couple of weeks ago. So, like, ain't, there's nothing going to live in the north half of this state like it is in the southern half. That That's what's frustrating. So I hope that FWC would model it like they do for our fishing, you know, 
it, it, it it's not all one size fits all. It needs to be by county or by a region. Mm -hmm. um, it is what I'm hoping, but man, it, uh, I was really disappointed. I, you know, I, I'd heard that yesterday and it, it bothered me. It, it really, it frustrated me to hear that about the monitors and just, you know, it, it was really, I think we might have lost them for a moment. All right, uh, so uh, I'm going to ask a question to Anthony. Oh, hi. Hey, man. Uh, it's kind of a half question, half a statement. I feel like you don't even have a question, and you're just I talking. I do. I do. No, he no, does. I do. No, I can tell. I can see it in yeah, his eyes. Yeah, I got it. I've been, I've been holding this in all night. You ready for this? Yep. First off, why do you shave? Because you look really stupid. I look so stupid. Thank you for mentioning. <laughs> I look so dumb. Um, yeah, I don't, you know, wear, wearing the masks all day. Uh, yes, I said masks. Uh, double masking is apparently a thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's just, it's just tough, man. It's just tough. So, so is to, it, I, it is better without, because I've been debating. Uh, you know, I wear my beard nice and big, and it hides yeah. a lot of things that have been happening to me in my own transformation over the past decade. Okay. Uh, namely under here, uh, Beautiful. you know, it makes this look, yeah, yeah. So I, I'm looking at myself and just like, who, it looks like we have Butterbean on the show today. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> like, yo, who is, I didn't, re I knew I got fatter, but I never really saw it as much as this moment. I'm already used um, to it. first. I was like, what's happening? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there's that. Yeah. Um, but it's what happens when I wear my beard a certain way, I'll put the mask on and then like my mustache is like in my nose and in, and in my mouth, it's just horrible. So anyway, this, yeah. this is much. So, so there's a line in Pulp Fiction where I think her name is Fabian, uh, Bruce Willis's girlfriend says, what, what we find pleasing to the eyes and pleasing to the touch are seldom the same thing. So I hate the way a beard feels, but I look so stupid without it. So go ahead. Feast your eyes guys. Thank you, Steve, for the close up. <laughs> uh so there's the questions aren't stopping but i'm gonna jump to this one because uh i like this one uh yeah. and kind of tied in so jeremy asked you like a challenge what other challenges are represented in your herb collection aside from conixis and i want to tie that in really quick with the fact that this is a turtle podcast and you chose a caiman lizard for your your image so what's up with caiman <laughs> lizards too yeah let's what's, talk about some other the deal? Fun. Yeah, yeah man no the, i mean the caiman lizard, like the snail specialist, the snail tegu, right? I mean, what else? What else needs to be said? Um, that the the caiman lizard is is one that I've I always thought was like such a cool animal when I was a kid. Um, very, you know, just a real pretty animal. Um, thought it was so so neat. Never heard about them. Never heard anything about them. Um, I didn't know anybody that had. I've never, you know, never been around any. So. Um, that is is one big challenge for sure that I'm that I'm looking forward to. Um, George and Wheezy, my uh, you know, I was telling you you guys about earlier that pair. They're uh, they're going on three years old, so we're uh, we're looking forward to seeing if we can uh, you know get those two lovebirds you know to connect and and uh, see if they they like each other and they like uh, what they got going on. At what age do they hit sexual maturity? I'm hoping around three. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh what else do you I don't know that anybody knows i mean nobody I don't, I don't know who's really produced them here in the states um so i don't know they're beautiful lizard they, oh yeah God. they're cool they're really i mean as far as an attitude they that's what are, i was gonna ask next you know what they're they the coolest they, i mean like they're really cool. I mean, they'll get fired up, you know, and want to, I mean, like they'll come after me for a little bit of food, but for the most part, they're, they're pretty smart. They'll just sit back. They'll, they'll tong feed like crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, if they go a day without food day or two, you know, they'll get a little, a little squirrely and stuff and start coming out of the cage at me. But like, they're really, they're not a fast, you don't get that monitor feel from them where they're like, Man, I could take you. You're a you're a, you're you're skinny. I could get you. You know, like I could get this. Yeah. They're just like, man, where's the easy food? Um, and they want to hang out. They they're cool to hang out with. So, which is what I, I like about them. I mean, it's rewarding for me because they're not they're not trying to eat me. Yeah. 
Okay, question about them, but also a pop culture question. Yeah. So they're obviously named after the Jeffersons, George and Wheezy. So uh, multiple choice. Is that their names? Are those their names because uh, the female wheezes when she breathes? Or is it because the male has kind of like a George Jefferson walk? Or is it unrelated? Uh, no, she, they either. definitely, you know, I'll... Um, they're in a really big cage, you know, in a in in a in a warehouse setting right now because they're inside because it's winter, and there's a bunch of other stuff going on around them. Stuff around and and Wheezy will be, Wheezy will be like right there, you know, right there at that at that edge of the cage, seeing what I'm doing, breathing on, you know, just whispering sweet nothings, kind of breathing breathing on my neck, that kind of thing. Um, <laughs> And and I mean you know he's got a little bit of the the George I mean it's a little bit of the the Mick Jagger you know I mean he's got the the strut a little bit but so Weezy, D all of the above Weezy, yeah mm-hmm. Weezy runs the show man Weezy Weezy's the boss you don't uh you know you don't you don't step in between in between a woman and her plate of food I can George will tell you that you know yeah there's <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so much so I like don't this. I don't go over to uh, Facebook as much just to check the questions, but I got a good one here. Tyler, how do you split your time between the care and your job? Uh, these are good questions. These are really good questions. Um, I've got good people at my job. Um, I've got great employees. Um, no, it is just that it's just another part of it is I don't like being I don't like not having anything to do. So I, I'm a business owner. I, you know, I've got employees. I, you know, I'm a husband, I'm a father and all that stuff, you know, comes before reptiles. Um, you know, I, I want to stop. And I the person that asked that question was your wife. Yeah. yeah I, I knew it was. I absolutely knew it was. I'm trying to be so careful. All right. I love it. Um, What's your wife's name, Tyler? Megan, Megan, M- Megan, Megan. Thank you so much, Megan, for for tuning in. You're, you're a wonderful wife. Making me. Smile. My wife, my wife does not watch all the shows. So, I think Amanda's watched one. Casey watches about. Well, she watches like half of half of them, and then usually one of us makes her fall asleep. Let's <laughs> let's let let's let Tyler uh, answer the question, but I also just let me just insert this now, Megan. We'd love to have you and Tyler, or just you on the totally devoted podcast where we discuss yeah. relationships and what it's like to be with somebody a couple times, man, for sure. Good. Good. We'd like, we'd like to have you guys on there, but mostly just Megan. Okay. Sure. You could, you can answer that question now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take mine. Yeah. Um, very, very delicately. My wife and children come first. That's what I'm sticking with. That's <laughs> more definitively the second yeah. time after he. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, No he, air quotes. He's right, right, right. Damn, she's Good job, you <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. You guys, you guys sound great. It's great. <laughs> what else you got, Kev? Uh, last one that I think is really important. What trick would you do to get hingebacks eating? Oh. I mean, if you've done it already, you know, you've had success, you work with people that have had success, the people that haven't, what should they do differently? Um, I mean, honestly, look at, look at everything, you know, it's not just about what's on that plate of food, right? Um, you know, leaving the damn thing alone is, is a really good first step, you know, Mm -hmm. leaving the thing alone, um, Give it and in, in seriously, giving it plenty of places to hide. I try and I try and do pothos or you know plants in, in all of my enclosures. Um, giving them plenty of places to hide, a dark area. Now I've got UVB on all of them on every one of my connexus. Um, but giving them a good dark place to hide, giving them the humidity, um, and staying consistent. Don't go for the cheap easy. Fix, which is you know watermelon or or banana or something like that. Um, stay consistent with what you got, and and honestly, try protein 
worms, um, you know, protein as far as mice goes. These guys love, love, love protein. So those are a couple of things that I would, I would, I would go for. Okay, awesome. Uh, that's who's, work, who's working on their drumming right now? Yeah, is that you, Chris? That? I, I couldn't keep a straight face, and that was not me. Oh, it's Steve. No, that was definitely oh, Steve. Oh, nobody heard it then. Nobody heard it. <laughs> Steve. Oh, somebody, man. Somebody's like banging on the bongos yeah. somewhere. I'm like, what the we hell? We all started like smirking on? at the same time. I know. Because oh, I thought it was Chris, because he's got the music thing and he's always drumming. And... Yeah, but no, I wasn't doing anything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I actually thought it was. I was like, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know I'm doing it anymore. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure what to do with my hands. Yeah. <laughs> Got two feet. <laughs> oh boy, that was funny. Okay, and see, this is what happens, Tyler. We we gave him the warning. Sometimes we embarrass ourselves because Thanks. Steve does something and we react to it, and nobody else knows what we're doing. It's like there's a ghost in the room that nobody else can see. Hey, yeah. what does Connexus mean? I missed that one. What's that? What does Connexus mean? Like the origin, I guess. Um, wow. I mean, that's a that's a damn good question. Um, Who's back? Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I believe that that's it. I, I really I, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Does it really, Chris? Do you know that for yes. sure? Yes, I mean, it rose. I I, like I, 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 uh, I had a yeah. chat chat with uh, my connections before the show came on. I was like, all right, hold up, huddle up, guys. We're gonna yeah. talk about a few things, and uh, that wasn't funny. And uh, you probably can't. <laughs> Uh, it. Dr. Doolittle over here. Yeah. It's Grand Chalhi's birthday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You didn't Did you learn how to do that from the monk's book? Are you ta- who's talking to me right now? Are you both talking to me? Because <laughs> you're both I'm look- crazy. Chris, I'm looking right at you. No, you're not. You're looking up in the left corner. <laughs> <laughs> and there's the seltzer water. There it is. Always. Is it a seltzer? Uh, it is. It's a. Uh, I don't. Blood orange lemonade. Nah, ooh. Mm-hmm. Well, it's good. It's a you seltzer can with absinthe in it. You lost me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Am I that far gone tonight? Jeez. Yeah. Usually. Phoenixus means to move. So there you go. Steve just said. Move the back. back. Oh, my gosh. Move to move the, the back. Block. That's going to be the, that's gonna be the name of my new rap <laughs> album. Back it up. Move, your back. move that back. Yeah. yeah. Move your back. Kev, do we have any more questions? Steve is reading it? It to us. Uh, actually, this is a good one. Other than their native range, which part of Earth is most suitable to keep Connexus? You know, knowing that you know everything about Earth. Yeah. Well, is, that, is, um, that, is that an outdoor keeping question? Because obviously you can, you know, control things indoors. Okay. Well. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, that's a good point. I don't really know because I don't keep them outside. But I would say keep them inside and you can control it all. Um they, they really don't, man. They don't do good outside. The, the I can't wait. I mean, I will try, you know, some captive born outside. Um, and I would assume that, like, I mean, I, look, look at Spec Eye. I think probably Arizona's going to, they're going to do great out there. But, you know, captive born wise, they don't, wild caught, don't do good outside. I don't know what it is up here in this hemisphere or what we've got going on or 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 what. You know, or, or what they're carrying doesn't doesn't sit well with them. Um, I think indoors is, is the be, you know artificial. You know, is probably the best. Sadly, but it's probably the best for founders. Um, but you know, I would th- you would think Florida would be great for us and Homiana and Nagui, but they they don't do great outside. So I don't know. Okay, uh, that's all I got for questions. That was awesome. That was the longest. That was yeah. That was had. the longest. Uh, no, you just said it. Yeah. We <laughs> only get two to three. That was the longest mailbag, guys. Hey, oh. probably the longest mailbag. Forty minute mailbag. We were just told. Should we? We could rename it that. The forty minute mailbag. <laughs> <laughs> you know the old forty minute mailbag. <laughs> so we were say, all right, guys, listen. Is Jeremy watching tonight? Because if so, we got to go with another forty minute mailbag. All right. <laughs> You always ask good questions. That's a compliment. Yeah, they are really okay? good questions. Yeah. Kevin said, I look like Butterbean. Jeremy, you ask good questions. So we're, we're sharing the compliments all the way around tonight. <laughs> I will be impressed if anybody knows who Butterbean is. Google it. Google it. Of us. I don't know. You know, I, I like to think that, <laughs> you know, we have a show mostly made up of people Meatballs. in the same age. Yeah. You know? <laughs> 
you know? Uh, there we go. What? Uh, what are you I'll doing? You. Yeah, where are you? I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Couldn't Steve just oh, pull that up? For... Oh, room. yeah. <laughs> there I am. <laughs> yeah. There I am. There he is. There oh, I am. Man. Yep. Steve's I working look like on, if Steve's working if, on the Turtle Room website right now. He's changing your profile. I, I look like if Butterbean and Moby had a love child. That's the guy, the singer. Uh, <laughs> Moby Butter. Oh. Going to the inside. I don't know that whole so, song. Tyler, is there, um, to sum it up, is there anything that you can, anybody who might be thinking about, like on the cusp of, I think I want to try Conixis. Is there a certain type of Conixis that you would recommend? And, you know, just a couple of like main pointers, you know, to go along yeah. with it. You know, look, if you're talking about it, you say there's some, you know, you see some homie honor or spec eye or something like that on fauna and you want to try them, reach out to the Conixis working yeah. group. But the, the first thing I would say is, is like a, what I was saying, you know, Leave them alone, dark. Um, just, you know, I, I really don't know what to say. Just, just be ready to be, you know, take it serious. Um, yeah. Put full, put the, put your full, you know, resources into it. Actually, give, give a damn and, and try. Get, harder, you know, I mean, I try, but try harder. Um, yeah. and, and really take it serious if you want to. I mean, like, because if I can do it, anybody can damn do it. You know, it's taking the time to realize what you're looking at, give it a crap enough to figure out what it wants on that plate and, and why it's not taking it. I mean, some of mm -hmm. it, yes, you get sick animals, but like, but try it, it, right. and, you know, and, and don't don't give up after the second one dies. Don't give up after mm -hmm. the third one dies. You know, I mean, like, I, I don't want it to get to that point, but man, stick with it. Mm -hmm. and, and 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 do your research reach out to us at the connections working group you know i i don't have a great a huge profile on any social media but you can find me and i will answer questions people do ask me stuff i mean of course they're gonna go to you know i mean jeremy's gonna field most of that tom arbor's gonna field most of that you know right. they're, they're much more high profile and tom's better at, at communication than i am or and probably I don't know if he wants to do it, but <laughs> he's he is better at it. Um, but reach out, care, and and it's real simple to, to start it off. Keep them keep them low light, keep them dark, keep them keep don't don't be messing with them much. Um, we'll tell you what they eat. You know, I mean, like it's not a secret. You know, a lot of squashes. You know, mm -hmm. sweet potato, mushrooms. Mm -hmm. It's nothing that's going to break the bank. These tortoises will not eat you out of a house and home like, a, you know, like a red foot. Well, like a group of red foot, so like a sulcata or leopards or something like that. You know, I mean, these guys aren't you don't you know, you don't have to break the bank to feed them. Um, they, and they're you know, they can be set up pretty minimally and, and they don't need a whole lot once you get them established. Um, but it's just caring enough to get them there. Right. Yeah, I, I, I think that's great. And I think, you know, again, to bring that up, the, the whole challenge statement, don't be afraid of a challenge. But like Anthony said, be, be committed to the challenge. Be sure you can take on the challenge. And what's great about this is with the Conixus Working Group and the Conixus Cooperative, anybody who is considering taking something on like this for the right reasons and because they can be committed to it, you guys as a group is a great resource that a lot of people don't have, you know. There's no Sulcata cooperative. There's just the pet trade, you know, and you're right. Those guys are going to eat you out of house and home. And unless you're Andrew Hermes, Hermes that can give them an unbelievable home. Cause I think when Anthony, and I left this place, I was like, dude, Sulcata's are really cool because of how, because of how he's able to do it. Right. Right. Like, it's an yeah. animal that needs minimal requirements compared to that, that, you know, is not going to eat you out of house and home. You guys are an incredible resource for that. All of us are trying to, you know, help out in, in, in learning ourselves. You know, I'm, I'm working with certain ones right now. And once yes, I, sir. if I'm able to figure it out, I'm going to share that with everybody, but yeah, yeah. that's, that's great. You know, it, it's, we have something here. Anybody who's watching this or is going to watch this later, this is a valuable resource right here. These are living, breathing people that you can reach out to, to learn about a group of tortoises that needs help both in conservation and in captivity. 
A hundred percent. And that's a great point as well, Chris. I mean, if if you want to be involved in any aspect of the Conexus, if it is the conservation, if it is in Africa that you want to, we we can be that vessel. We can get you, you know, people that if you if you want to donate, that's fine. If you want to go there, we can put you, you know, we can help you do that. Um, that's a that's a great point. So thank you for bringing that up. Absolutely. This is awesome. I, I think it ought to serve as like a blueprint for how things should be done. Like we talk all the time and, and I listen to a lot of reptile podcasts and, and read a lot of reptile stuff and talk about having like these champions for certain species Like, don't, you know, don't have your whole collection be all over the place uh, like mine is in, in yeah. some ways. Uh, you know, focus on one thing, you know, be, be Ralph Till, be Jeremy, focus on, focus on one thing and really hone in on it. Like, yeah, that's, that's awesome. This is taking it to a different level. This is providing people with resources. This is building a network. It's, it's everything that you want to see. Um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's just awesome. And, and it's been such a pleasure to get to know you guys. This is the first time that we've actually spoken Tyler and, and, and myself and i don't know if chris if you've had conversations yeah, with Tyler before yeah. yep. i know steve has and i know you you talked to kevin earlier in in preparation for this but just like that to me is why eight years in i'm still so excited to do the podcast and why mm -hmm. i don't plan on stopping anytime soon because we're we're bringing people together and and just doing our little part to help um to promote that sort of thing and and you guys are doing all the work and and it's just um, it's just awesome to see. And even, even with, with not having any hinge back towards as myself, I feel because of you guys and the way you're so collaborative that, that I'm helping in some way, just by directing people to you and knowing that something good is going on and having some more answers and having learned from people like Tom and Jeremy and yourself. So, um, it's just awesome. It's great to be a part of it. So, yeah. so thank you. Thank you, man. I, I appreciate it. And, and right back at you with the three of you guys, you know, putting your mugs up here, interviewing people, you know, hanging out with jerks like me for an hour and a half, two hours, you know, I mean, it's like, yeah. it, I mean, it's work. Yeah. I mean, y'all take a lot of time out of y'all's life to make this, this, this happen, you know, yeah. and for good or for bad, you know, I mean, like y'all may get back and go, man, that sucked or whatever, but like y'all are doing it and, yeah. and you continually continue to do it. And that sticking with it is making a difference. You know, I mean, it's important what y'all are doing, and I appreciate it. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I think we could we could leave it right there. So if you want to see Tyler and the guys TTPG conference next year, do you have something else, Kev? I have one last thing, but after you, oh, please. No, 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 no please fine. after no. you. All right. All okay. right. Well, we we got a special request for a dad joke, so there's going to be one. Okay. okay. Who right. was requested for the dad joke? You're telling uh, it? Me, yeah. I was requested that I would tell the dad joke. Who asked this? Your daughter? Yeah. Who, no. <laughs> Michael Thatthu Swami. I'm sorry. I can never say it. I apologize. Thatthu Swami. Mikey T. That's right. M Michael, better, known as that? Mike, better known as Mikey T. Listen, Mike's one of my favorite people. I actually like him better than you guys. So <laughs> Mike's awesome. Mike is a good dude. Mike's He's awesome. just the best. I'm sorry. Listen, I call him Michael. Is are you guys like in the cool club with Mike? Yeah, you and guys I don't are, know. You guys are on a Mike level. I'm with Anthony. I thought it was a Mike. <laughs> yeah. mean, what just happened? Michael, Mike. You know, Iron, I don't know. Iron Mike. Okay. Mike, Listen, he'll, he'll, he'll send me messages like, "Hey, I haven't seen you in a while. I just want to make sure you're okay." I'm like, "That's what a sweet guy." Yeah. You know, Dur Dirty Mike in the gang. <laughs> what else is there? We could... <laughs> Mikey strikes. Uh, All right. So you ready? Why do reptiles have so many scales? Why? No. Because they're worried about their weight. Damn it. <laughs> it was atrocious. It was so bad. Hold on. <laughs> was that joke. your joke? Was that your joke or his? I said it for him. Did he say, hey, Kevin, tell this joke. It'll be funny. No. He just he asked said, my dad joke and I made, I just pulled it. I looked it up on the internet. You know, you, you, know, you know, Kevin, maybe, here. He, maybe he doesn't like you. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he doesn't. Hey, Kevin, tell this joke on the air. People I chose that joke. <laughs> My wow. joke was bombed. Fox Force 5, you, that could be your new gimmick. You're going you're gonna to tell a joke at the end of every episode. I think we should stick with that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Now right. we have, yeah, two, joke it is. We have sure. two features that are going to stick here. One is Minto's mailbag, and the other is Minto's I'm just trying to pump Kevin on the podcast, man. That's all <laughs>
<laughs> right? It's I good. miss I miss my old uh I miss our old features. We yeah. can bring them back. Mm-hmm. They're still there. They're just, you know, dormant. Up, They're like I'm cicadas. I, I like the dad joke thing, as cheesy as it could possibly be. Yeah. yeah. You know? I'll our, our features, with you for the next one, Chris. Our features huh? are like cicadas. They, we'll they go away for, for, for a while. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I got a okay. great library joke. Right. Well, you don't say it now. I, I won't. It's not a dad <laughs> joke, though. But, I mean, it could, I guess it could be. But you could turn it into one. Yeah. I'm embarrassed. I don't know what happened. Tyler, you're a dad, right? So I know we're trying to head off. I'm just curious. Like, what kind of children do you have? Boys, girls? So I've got two girls. <laughs> yeah. What? Oh, two girls. Wow. All of us here. Oh, wow. Okay. Girl dad. Two girls, two girls, two girls, two girls, two girls. <laughs> do you want to jump on and be like a permanent part of the show? Yeah, right. right. Sure. sure. Our eight daughters. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Wow. wow. All right. That was good, Kev. We, we could do like a lead in like a Brady Bunch. Yeah. It's a story of a lovely guy. guy. Yeah, that's the way we all became the turtle bunch. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna call it. Yeah, mm-hmm. Kevin, you started this. Don't 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 huff at me. You started this. You and you and Mike. You and you yeah, and Iron Mike. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah he, he you can call Iron Mike. Mike. There's already an Iron Mike. He's already Listen, Mike, he's you all high get Mike. Your face. He gets to call Michael Mike, and the rest of us get to call him Michael. Mike, I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna stay with Mike for now. On sorry, can you get this Connexus, Connexus tattooed on your face right here so you can be Iron Mike? Wow. Oh, good, good idea. Mm-hmm. What about Magic Mike? I'm gonna call Michael Thakuva Swami Magic what, Magic Mike. Oh, uh, I bet he dances better. Magic Mike XL. <laughs> all right. I'm envisioning Chris Farley and and uh, Patrick Swayze. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> <laughs> all right we're gonna end this now G- guys if, if anyone's still uh, watching thank right. you thank you, <laughs> thank you. This yeah. we been, haven't this lost this, awesome this has been an awesome one we really appreciate you guys tuning in uh we'll see you next time uh we'll be here one month from now we look forward to seeing you the date what's the date uh the f- in april what's the date the fifth april 5th april 5th. make that up yeah, april 5th april 5th, 5th. April 5th. All right. We'll see you there. And we'll do April Fool's jokes to each other. And Kevin will have another dad joke. So be there. Hey, real quick before we roll out, uh, Tyler, do you want to tell anybody anything that they can, you know, get in touch with you through any, any, you know, any of the Knixis stuff uh, that, you know, people Absolutely. can find you guys on? You. The, uh, on Instagram uh, and Facebook, Knixis, we're at Knixis Working Group. Um, reach out, man. Come, you know. Drop us a line if you want to. If you have any interest in Connexus, you know, hit us up. Um, we've got some cool stuff going on at Randy Kudu Reptiles. Check out, check us out on Instagram. We've we've got a bunch of cool cool stuff going on there. Um, we love animals, man. We we love this this hobby. Um, yeah, check us out. Awesome, 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 awesome. There's a valuable source for you folks. Use it. Don't let it uh, disappear. Thank you guys for for doing this. Thank you. Thanks for coming on. Thank you so much. Thank you.